I got into blogging. Um, when my son was born in 2013, he was really poorly. Um, I won't bore you all with the glory details, but this went on for a couple of months. Um, and I really struggled to get a diagnosis and get the formula that he needs because he's allergic to milk. He also now has multiple allergies. He was suffering really bad with reflux. Um, but yeah, so I was kind of doing my own research and finding everything online and like really kind of struggling. And that went on for like 18 months. And then after 18 months, I actually found, I discovered there's a charity for this allergy um, online and I joined their Facebook support groups. That was literally like a turning point for me. All of a sudden I went from having no support, struggling on my own, to having thousands of people to message 24 seven and all this support. So then I thought, I've got all this information that I've found over the last 18 months. I wanna do something with it. I wanna give back and help everyone. I don't want anyone else to struggle like I did. So I'm gonna make a blog and just put it all there and then people can find it. So that's why I started my blog. Uh, once I started doing it, absolutely loved it. Um, and then after six months of blogging, the founder of the charity actually asked me to be their food writer. So I now write for the charity um, every week. And yeah, I just loved it so much that I wanted to like make it my full-time job. Um, so I started my own Facebook support group, which now has like t over 2,000 active members in. Uh, I think I had a lot less than like 63% of my traffic comes from Facebook and 19 from Pinterest. Um, but I have a bounce rate of less than 1%. So literally everyone who comes to my website is coming for like dairy free finds or dairy free stuff or cow's milk protein allergy. So it is like a really niche, um, like focused blog. And I think with a blog, I think with a blog you do need to kind of focus on a niche and like be sure why you're doing it. I think a lot of bloggers quit because, you know, some not everyone but some people think, oh I'm going to start this blog and it's going to be amazing and I'm going to work with brands and get paid loads of money and do this and that and it's easy and it might look easy and glamorous online but actually it does take a lot of effort, a lot of research, a lot of work, a lot of hours into writing um, and making your blog into what you want it to be. Um, so you do need to be sure of why you're starting it and what you want it to be about because it will literally take over your life as well as mine has um, but yeah there's loads of different angles you can go down as well like I started monetizing my blog so I've made my own recipe books um, I offer other like service on there affiliate links um, so yeah there's loads of different routes I've actually started as well since winning the UK blog awards when I won I was kind of like because it's all about connecting bloggers and brands and growing. When I won, it was a bit like all the brands who'd sponsored the UK Blog Awards wasn't really interested in my little dairy-free blog. So I've actually now founded my own Allergy Blog Awards UK. So I'm now getting the brands who cater for allergies, uh, connecting them with the allergy bloggers. Um, so there's loads of different you know, routes and avenues and stuff that you can go down. Um, I was a student at Salford University and I studied dental radiography and I've worked in dentistry for 10 years so you know this is nothing to do with dentistry yet I've won an award for it so I think as well that's something that's really relevant is that all your skills are transferable and you know your blog might be about one thing but you can put other things on there and you know it's all about being relatable as well and connecting with your readers and I think my readers really relate to me and that's why sometimes I'll just put a good rant on about something and I'll think oh no one will even read it you know it's not even about cow's milk protein allergy and then I might get like a hundred people message me about it and I'm like oh you know so it is kind of connecting with your readers as well and just building that like online rapport with them um people think oh you know seo seo i've got to focus on seo and i think content is king um but i think you've got to be relatable and you've got to be shareable so if you can make your content so that your readers are going to relate to you they're going to want to come back for more and if they're sharing it on their social media i don't think there's anything better than that i think three percent of my traffic comes from google which isn't really a lot after I've been doing this like 18 months. It's not really a lot, but the people who do come to my website are there for a reason. And I think that's why I have sold so many recipe books and 
you know, I do have like a good following on social media and a really engaged audience. Like audience like mine, I was already in a support group on Facebook as I mentioned. Uh, when I joined that Facebook support group, I think it had about five, six thousand people in it. It's now got over fifteen thousand um, and we have multiple support groups. I think the total number is over forty thousand and they're all active members. So they're all looking for this niche and I'm giving it to them. Um, I think if you can solve a problem for your readers, then you're on to a winner. Um, I'm solving that problem. You know, I'm, everything I find out, everything I learn, all the foods I find, everything, all my recipes, it's all going there. So everyone else doesn't have to spend hours online searching it. They can go on my website and it's there. So I'm solving their problem. So I think that's why I have such an engaged following. So in terms of the business idea, so the, the idea is that you get publicity for those um, people that you said you've got affiliates on, on, on the side? Yeah, so I do affiliate marketing. Um, in all honesty, I'm not like it's few and far between, like nowhere near enough to pay the bills um, that I've made from affiliates. I actually publish my monthly income reports on my blog, um, so you can go on there and have a look. I just put it on there really just to inspire me and motivate me to keep going and just to inspire anyone else who wants to follow the dream and you know try and make a living out of doing something that they love. Um, but yeah, affiliates I don't really make that much. Um, I think if you want to make money from your blog, the best thing to do is have your own products. If you can, if your readers, you know, connect with your readers, listen to your readers, if they've got a problem and you can solve it with a product, make your own product and solve that problem and then I think that's the best way to make money. You know, that product might be you, it might be you offering a service like online coaching or webinars anything. I think with sponsored posts I've never done one. Um, I know bloggers who have but the majority of bloggers I know who do sponsored posts are getting like £40 a post and I'm thinking how many sponsored posts are you going to have to write to pay your bills every month? It's not really. And then I think at the risk of turning away your readers for £40, for me I'd rather not but every blogger is different and it's your blog and it's your platform and it's your story and you can do what you want you know there's no rules to it i think as well just like kind of trial and error try something if it doesn't work for you like i tried youtube youtube videos i didn't like it i didn't really like being in front of the camera i was cringing at myself and i i didn't really get much traction from it so i just stopped doing it uh, last month I started an allergy podcast, so I'm like interviewing other allergy parents, allergy specialists, uh, people who've been doing it 20 years and stuff, like I've interviewed people from America and Australia. I absolutely love it. I think even if no one listens to this, I want to carry on doing it, um, but people are listening to it and I have had some great feedback. Um, so it's just kind of trial and error and, you know, figure out what works for you. It might be that you want to do webinars, you might... Uh, want to do Snapchat that seems to be like the latest thing with bloggers um, I think with Snapchat because you can't see how many people are following you you can only see how many people have viewed your snap it's kind of really changing up the you know the online blogging world and people are starting to focus more on engagement rather than numbers like people can buy followers they can buy likes um, so it's not necessarily like I looked at someone's page the other day and he had this similar number of likes to me yet I scrolled through his post and he, he didn't have one like on anything he shared yet mine are getting like a hundred likes or 50 likes or so I was like his audience isn't engaged so yeah snapchat's like the new biggest thing it's live you can't edit it and you can only see how many people have actually viewing yet and I think that's why Facebook have done live video as well because um, again you can see how many people have viewed rather than how many people liked your page maybe two years ago and haven't looked at it since. But yeah, I think engagement is a really big one to kind of focus on and don't get hung up on the numbers like when I first started I'd be on Google Analytics and I'd be like oh how many page views did I get this month and you can just like waste so much time looking at it when you could have spent that time writing a blog post and it really it doesn't mean anything unless people are engaged. I think my passion and my drive comes from because I struggled so much I don't want any other parents to go through what I went through so 
again comes back to trial and error try what works for you see what you like see what you don't like and if you don't like it don't do it and what would you say you know a lot of those when you look at um, a lot of interesting blogging they have these 10 rules of blogging 5 rules of blogging bullet points and numbers as, as a blogger what, what, are, your, what are your rules or sort what of was that, sorry. about blogging you know like bloggers they have oh like blogging tips yeah my biggest tip I'd say is network, 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 absolutely network. Like um, when I joined that Facebook support group in the beginning after a month, I felt like a new woman. I know it sounds cliche, but I did. Um, it literally turned my life around. I suddenly was more confident. And so I decided I wanted to start my blog and I contacted the founder of that charity. I explained to her my situation, how grateful I was to her for the charity why I was starting my blog, what my goals were for that and then at the end of that I asked permission to share my blog posts in the support group because I knew it would help her, you know, like members of the charity. Um, she said yes because I'd asked. She, she doesn't actually allow bloggers because um, lots of people join these Facebook support groups and just share their posts and disappear but because I was an active member and she could see how genuine I was and I reached out to her, she said yes. Um, and then six months after me working so hard and you know sharing all this information and helping so many of the group members is why she gave me the role as a food writer. So I think networking and the reason I'm here today is because I randomly started chatting to a woman at the bar at UK Blog Awards and she introduced me and <laughs> then we was just chatting and I must have mentioned my bounce rate and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely network, and that's in all areas of your life, network, wherever, you know. But especially with blogging, it will be hard at the beginning, like a blogger might contact you and say, or when you're in the beginning, sorry, you know, there might be a blogger in your niche who's doing really well and you're like, oh, you know, if they just shared my thing or introduced me to their community, I could get there so much quicker. But if you're going to ask somebody for something, it's got to be a win-win on both sides. You know, like I asked a charity member, could I share this in your group? Obviously that helped me because it brought people to my website, but it also helped her because it was helping her group members. So it was a win-win for both. Um, so yeah, I think if you're going to approach people and don't be afraid to just, just give something like, you know, write a guest post for somebody else and just solely have it on their website and help their readers and I think if you're going to approach someone as well who's doing well in your niche and say can I write a guest post it can't just be like an advert back to your blog or you know it's got to add value um, to their website and help their readers otherwise they're not going to want it so yeah win-win for both I think when you're networking at least try Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, I would like to know how you come up with all the new ideas for your book. Because I came back in the beginning was quite easy because you did all the research. Yeah. And now, you know, like, yeah. sometimes difficult. I think I'm a person who gets bored very easily. I love change, so I'm always changing things anyway. Like I was saying earlier, this is the third theme I've actually had on my website. Um, this latest theme I actually installed because I wanted a recipe directory. Um, so I'm always changing things, I'm always looking at ways to improve um, recipes, I'm always looking to try like new recipes and try new foods, I'm always experimenting in the kitchen. Um, I've actually got loads of recipes that I've not put on my website yet because I've just not had a chance. Um, and yeah, I think in terms of writing about it, because I will put personal experiences on there, which you know can happen every single day, I think that's why I never run out of content. It's not, you know, and my blog is far from perfect as well, like I, my photography is not good, um, so my pictures aren't great and I don't try and go for this like perfect looking blog, like yeah it is nice to look nice, don't get me wrong, and I'd love to have better pictures and I'd love it to look nice and be written better maybe, but I don't, I just put all my personal experience on there and everything that I can to help other people and yeah that's why I never run out of content because it's just my life basically and I'm living every day, <laughs> creating new content. <laughs> yeah. Well, the tips. Yeah. And you mentioned networks. Network. 
but in terms of writing a blog, the structure, yeah. you have an idea. Oh, sorry, the structure of the actual content. So if you were if you were advising new bloggers, um, what kind of structure? How would you actually start thinking about? You know, when you're writing a story, you think about certain things. Do you mean like a beginning, a middle, and an end? Yeah, yeah, things like that. I'm not one of these people who plans. I'm not. I'm not a planning person. Um, I don't say that I'm a writer or anything like that. Um, I just. I think for me as well, writing is an outlet. So I'll literally sit and write, um, and then I'll read back and like make it look better and rewrite it. Um, but yeah, I think usually like if I'm out in the day and I'm busy and I get an idea, I just go on the notes on my phone and jot it down. I think that's kind of only really ma what I do but I think it's all about because it's your blog it's all about finding what works for you you know if you prefer to sit and plan writing a blog post then do that you know it's just about finding your own path and finding your own way and the market is saturated but there's always room for new things new blogs mm -hmm.